Welcome to this introductory video on synthesis. It's geared for those who are complete beginners or those who may have used virtual synthesizers but haven't ventured beyond surfing through the presets. I'll be following this introductory video up with a series of more in-depth videos on the various aspects of synthesis and sound design, so if that's something that you're interested in, definitely keep an eye out. But let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Now there are more than a dozen different types of synthesis, but a few of the most popular ones that you're gonna run into are subtractive, additive, FM, wavetable, and granular. These five will be the type that you encounter in most hardware and software synthesizers. Now for each of these types of synthesis, there are four main components. The oscillators, which generate our initial sound, a filter section, which helps us to define the timbre of our sound by cutting certain frequencies, an amp envelope, which allows us to control how the amplitude or audio level of our sound behaves over time. And finally, an LFO section, which stands for low frequency oscillator. Now don't get confused with the fact that this has the word oscillator in it. It doesn't actually produce audio or sound. The LFO generates frequencies that are used to modulate various parameters within our synths over time. The LFO can allow us to create things like vibrato, tremolo, or changes to our frequency cutoff while our sound is being played back. Now, if none of this makes any sense, don't worry, it will by the end of this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these four components of synthesis and how they relate to one another. First, we're gonna take a look at the foundation of our sound, the oscillator. Now I'm gonna be working within something called the grid, which is in Bitwig, and at the end of this video, we're going to take a look at several different third-party VSTs and see how these four components work within those synthesizers. And this grid is just going to provide us with a solid foundation to understand these components and how they relate to each other. And then it will make more sense once we move on to working with the third-party VST synths. So first, let's take a look at the foundation of our sound, the oscillator. So I'm going to come up to the top here and click on our oscillator section, and I'm gonna drag in a sine wave oscillator and just place this over to the left. And I'm actually going to zoom in a bit here. Let's go ahead and click and drag our oscillator over to this audio output. This is basically gonna take our audio signal from our oscillator and send this to an audio channel within Bitwig. So I'll click, hold, and drag. And let's actually take the level down just a little bit. So we can hear our sine wave being played back, but if we're working on a song, we don't want to have this droning throughout the entire song. So we can see our sine wave in the display window here, as well as our oscilloscope. And we can see that fundamental tone because the sine consists of one fundamental tone and it's the building block of all our other waveforms. But how can we go about controlling this sound? This is where the envelope comes in. So let's come to the envelope section and I'm gonna click hold and drag this onto the input of our audio out. So our audio now stops. And now that we have this envelope generator or the amp envelope connected in between our oscillator and our audio out, I can now use my MIDI keyboard to control the audio for our oscillator. Now on our amp envelope, we have several controls at the bottom, our ADSR, and this stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. And again, as I mentioned, these controls are gonna allow us to control how the audio level or our amplitude of the oscillator behaves over time as we're playing it back. So in its initial state, we have a quick attack. This is set pretty low. So as soon as I press a key on my controller, that is being triggered. 
if we would like to have a more gradual introduction to that maximum amplitude or audio level at the beginning, then we can increase our attack. And now we're going to have a more gradual introduction of that audio. Now on the end, we have our release and that's ending pretty quickly, fading out pretty quickly quickly. If we'd like to extend that out to have it last longer or to fade out more slowly, we can increase our release time. Okay, now we then have decay and sustain and these two work together. So if I press and hold, let's take our attack down a bit. The sustain is going to determine the level of our audio, our amplitude, while we're holding a key. So if I take this up, it's going to get louder. If I decrease, we're going to lower the amplitude or volume of our oscillator. Now the decay is going to determine the time that it, we fade into that sustain level. So if I increase the decay, we're going to have a relatively quick attack, a slower decay down to our sustain level, which again, is going to be tied in with when we're specifically holding the key down. So I'll go ahead and press and hold the key. We have that gradual decay into our sustain level, which can be lowered. Let me take the release time up. So now when I release the key, we have that gradual fade out. Now working with the ADSR controls is going to allow us to achieve certain different types of synthesis sounds. So for instance, if you wanted to have a pad sound, these usually involve a slower attack and a slower release. Now I'm going to press I and let's take a look at the inspector for our polygrid because by default we're going to be in mono, but I want to take this up to allow more voices to play back. This is going to give us more of that pad sound. Let's close that inspector back out. And now let's re-trigger. We'll take the release up a little bit. Okay, now if I wanted a pluck sound, then what we could do is take our attack all the way down, we'll take our sustain all the way down, and the decay and release are going to work together to allow us to achieve that. So let's take these to about the midway, we want these to be approximately the same. So now when I press and release, pressing and release, we're going to make use of the decay here. I'm sorry, when we press and hold, we're making use of the decay. If I press and release, we're then making use of the release. So either way, whether I press and hold, we have that pluck. Whether I press and release, we also have the pluck because the decay and release are both set the same. Okay, now a sine wave is not really the best for a pluck. Maybe something like a square would work a bit better for using the pluck, but just know that our ADSR controls are what we're gonna use to uh, help us get a pad, a lead, a pluck, or bell sounds. So, and we're gonna go into more details on working with these envelope generators and the amp envelope to achieve these different sounds in a future video. So now let's move on to take a look at a different type of waveform. Now most synthesizers are going to have four basic oscillators and we've been working with our sine. We also will usually have a pulse or square, then a triangle and a sawtooth. Now the square is actually contained within the pulse category. It's just is based on the setting. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to right click on our oscillator and then choose pulse here. And then by default, we're going to have a square because the duty cycles are both equal here. So when I trigger this, let's take our sustain up and we'll just lower our decay for the moment.
So we can not only see on our display, we have the square, but also if we look at our oscilloscope, we can see that square waveform here as well. And this is gonna have a brighter sound than our sine wave, as you can hear. And if you notice in the spectroscope, we have some higher harmonics that are giving us that brighter sound. Whereas with our sine wave, we just had that one fundamental. Now, if we were to make use of the pulse width control here, then we move into the pulse category. So we can take a look at the display here or our oscilloscope as we move away from our square. Okay, now next in line, we have our triangle. Now this is gonna have a bit of a duller sound than the square, and it has a strong fundamental with weak odd number harmonics. Okay, and then finally we have my favorite waveform, the sawtooth. Let's right click again and then come to the sawtooth. We can, let's take that shape back to the default. Now this looks like a sawtooth, right? So if I trigger, we can also see in the oscilloscope, we've got our saw there. And the saw is gonna have a really bright sound compared to the triangle. It contains a fundamental and all other harmonics. to do with the sawtooth is detuning so if we come to this area here with the plus and minus and activate that and let's take the hertz up a bit here we can hear that detuning in the stereo field we'll put our reverb back on Okay, let's move on to talk about the third component of synthesis, and that will be our filter. So let's come to the filter section here, and I'm gonna bring in the low pass MG. Let's drag that onto the input of our ADSR. Now the connections are gonna be made for us here, and you're gonna notice an immediate difference in our sound. It's a lot duller, and that's because our filter cutoff is taken down to two kilohertz. So as we move our filter cutoff down, we're attenuating those higher frequencies. And you can notice that in our spectroscope here. So if we start from the top, we see those higher frequencies. As I move down, those are being attenuated. Now, next to our filter cutoff, we have resonance. So if we kick this up a notch, then uh, what this is gonna do is boost the frequencies around where we're cutting. So right now at 113 Hertz, we've got a boost here because our resonance is up. And then as I sweep through the filter, we can see that peak. Now, the resonance is also going to attenuate some of those lower frequencies below our cutoff as well. So when I trigger, notice that if I take the resonance down, these frequencies are going to pull back up.
Okay, now there are several different types of filters and several different types of filter modes. So if I were to right click, let's change this filter to a Salon key. And then now we default to the low pass filter. So this is gonna be similar where we're atten attenuating those higher frequencies, but we can also click here. And then we have a menu with different modes for the Salon key filter. So we've got band pass where we can allow specific frequency bands through. We have high pass. And when we make use of the high pass, we're actually attenuating the lower frequencies below what we have our cutoff set to. So the frequencies below 508 Hertz are being attenuated. So when I play this back, it's gonna sound a lot thinner, especially if I increase. And we'll again take a look at the different types of filters and filter modes in a more in-depth video coming in the future. But for now, we're gonna take a look at the last component of synthesis that we need to know about, at least the main one. So that's gonna be our LFO, our low frequency oscillator. So let's come to the LFO section and then drag that in. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we can use the low frequency oscillator to bring about things like vibrato, tremolo, and also modulate our filter cutoff. And let's actually change this back to the low pass and let's trigger this. So one thing that really brings a lot of movement and uh, dynamics to our patches that we're working on is this movement of the filter cutoff, but we don't want to hold our mouse and do that. And this is where the LFO can come into use. So if I take the output of our LFO here, let's click, hold and drag that to the input of our filter. Now our LFO is going to modulate that cutoff for us. So if I go ahead and trigger and let's introduce some of that modulation by clicking here. We can increase the depth. And we can move to the left to kind of cut those frequencies. Now here on our LFO, I'm gonna click here and change this to Hertz. We start off on one Hertz, which is one cycle per second, but we can increase that rate. Now within most LFOs, we can also choose different waveforms to modulate our filter or whatever we're doing, whether we're working with the filter or a pitch. So let's choose this square or pulse. Let's try our sign. And we've got saw. Okay, now I mentioned vibrato. So let's go ahead and 
disconnect that LFO from our filter. And then we can take this output and connect it to our pitch input. So once we do that, then we can introduce some vibrato to our oscillator. Again, we can change the waveform type. Okay, so these are the four main components that you're going to find on most of the synthesizers that you will work with. And now we're going to move on to take a look at these four areas within other third party synths and how they work together there and how we can go about working with our envelope and applying modulation in those other VST synths. So first, let's take a look at Vital. And where are those four main components of synthesis within it? We can see in the upper left, we have our oscillator and Vital actually comes with three different oscillators that we can make use of, but we'll just keep this first one activated. Over to the right, we have our amp envelope with our ADSR controls. Below that, we have our LFO for modulation. And then in the bottom left, we have our filter. So let's go ahead and trigger this VST. So if we wanted to increase our attack, as we saw in the grid, our release, and Vital has this nice display so we can see the path of our audio signal uh, going throughout our envelope so we can see it through that slow attack going to our sustain again while we're holding the key we can decide what that audio level is going to be while we're holding the key on our controller and then our gradual release after I release the keys we can see that visual representation which is very cool now what about our LFO and modulation so with a lot of sense what we do is drag that modulation to the parameter that we'd like to apply it to. So in this instance, when I hover on LFO one, we can see that little icon pop up and I can click, hold and drag that to the filter cutoff that's then applied. So when I trigger, we can see we've got that modulation. We can adjust the rate. Now, Vital is a wavetable synth, so here we actually have a wavetable loaded in, and if we wanted to work with those four basic shapes, then we would use this slider here, and then as I move up, we can see we move to the sawtooth, the square, and our pulse. And now let's move on and take a look at Hive. Within Hive, we have a couple of different op oscillators that are up at the top left side. Then over to the right, we have a couple of filters. Down below, we have our amp envelope. And then over to the left, we have a couple of different LFOs. So if I go ahead and trigger, we've got our sawtooth. Then in this display, we can choose say, A sign, we've got our triangle, we've got pulse, 
And if we'd like to adjust our cutoff, we can simply come here. We have our resonance as well. Our envelope, taking the attack and release up. Now for the LFO here, uh, Hive has this set up in a really cool way so that our LFO is actually tied to the filter cutoff already. And all we need to do is work with this parameter here. So if I use my mouse wheel, I can just sweep that mouse wheel up and we introduce our low frequency oscillator one to the filter cutoff here. We can adjust the rate by coming here. Let's slow that down to take it to quarter. And of course, as we saw within the grid, we can change the waveform type of this. We've got a random hold. Okay, now to finish up, we're gonna take a look at Synth Master 2. Okay, finishing up, we've got Synth Master 2. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we can see we have our couple of oscillators available to us. And SynthMaster actually has two different layers. So we're on layer one at the moment. If we switch over, we have an additional two oscillators. And let's come back to layer one. We have filters up at the top, two here as well. Again, on layer two, we have another pair. Then below our filters, we have our amp envelope, which is titled ADSR1. To the right of that, we have our LFO for our modulation. Now, if I go ahead and trigger, we can activate our cutoff by clicking on the filter here. We've got our resonance. And I mentioned that there are several different types of filters and filter modes. So within SynthMaster 2, we start off on this state variable filter. Uh, we can come up to choose a, a different filter type. So if we wanted the virtual analog. And I also mentioned that with a lot of sense, when we want to apply modulation sources to parameters, we can click, hold, and drag. So if we wanted to modulate the cutoff as we've done uh, with the previous synthesizers, we can click, hold, and drag that LFO1 on top of the cutoff. Notice that highlight, and once I release, we have this orange collar, and I can click, hold, and drag with the double arrows there to adjust the depth of that modulation. So once I trigger again, let's take our resonance down. Now we can adjust the speed here, the depth. Let's put a touch of reverb on this.
Let's come back to our ADSR envelope and adjust our attack time. Now within Synthmaster, we have this slope here. We have an additional control for our attack where we can adjust the slope. Our release time, familiar controls, ADSR. The release time also has a slope that we can adjust. We've got our sustain level, so if we press and hold, we can then adjust the level of the amplitude. And familiar, another familiar control, we've got our decay time, so we can have a gradual introduction of our sustain level. And another cool thing about Synthmaster is we can left click in this window and choose a different type of waveform for our LFO. So this is going to give us a different, different feel for the modulation of our cutoff. Let's actually try a different one. And take the speed down. Okay, so I hope that it is becoming clear how each of these four areas are going to be on most of the synths that you find and how they work together and how you can find your way around within any synth if you understand these areas. And I think we will wrap up here. Again, I'll be coming with some more in-depth tutorials on other aspects of synthesis and going into more depth for the ones that we even covered today, as well as sound design. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial.